Hi guys, it's Coach Alex here again from Fast Fitness Tips. I'm here to talk to you about tyre pressure and specifically finding the optimal tyre pressure for your bike. Now this is a much misunderstood area. I'll grant you that uh, probably more mistakes are made in tyre pressure than any other area of bike fit. So let's see if I can help you get this right. Now it is a confusing area and the reason it's confusing is because we know from those older studies on the roller or from really smooth surfaces, for example the velodrome, that high tyre pressures basically help you reduce rolling resistance. When I say optimal tyre pressure, I really mean optimal for improving your performance, that is reducing your rolling resistance, CRR, and or um, avoiding pinch flats and any other safety concerns. So there is a balance to be had. And for sure, this is a complicated area because we've known for some time that high tyre pressures, higher tyre pressures, basically reduce rolling resistance under optimal conditions. And the optimal conditions being those with smooth surfaces, really smooth surfaces, like the wooden velodrome or, for example, ultra fresh, smooth, smooth tarmac. But outside of those tyre conditions, cyclocross riders and mountain bike riders have known for quite a long time now that low tyre pressures actually help you reduce rolling resistance in really rough conditions. So we've got these two extremes. Under smooth, ideal conditions, high tyre pressures help. And under very rough conditions, which you can see on road, on cobbles, then low tyre pressures actually help. And in mixed road conditions, we're at the kind of tipping point where neither super high nor super low tyre pressures actually are best, but somewhere in the middle. But the question is, where is that middle? And where is the optimum tyre pressure for you? That's what I'm going to help you find today. So to make a start with that, um, consider there are basically four factors that are influencing the tyre pressure choice. Number one is the weight of the rider. The weight of the rider determines the vertical load on that tyre. Clearly a heavy load pressing down on that tyre is going to compress that tyre and is going to increase the rolling resistance and it's going to give you more likelihood of pinch flats if you've not got at least a decent amount of air in that tyre. Secondly, we've got the volume of the tyre, which is basically related to the di diameter. The volume of the tyre is strongly related to how much pressure you need to have in that tyre. Third factor is the outside conditions. Very hard to judge them, but we can put some rough markers down that allow you to choose based on suitable outside conditions. And the fourth factor is really a constellation of other things, such as leakage from the tyre, air temperature, relatively minor concerns that we're not going to build into this model. Okay, so without further ado, what is this secret formula and how do we use that here at Fast Fitness Tips? No end of riders ask me the question, what is the optimal pressure for them? And the truth is, I can give you a ballpark figure. I can do better than most in pinning down what, what is the probable optimal tyre pressure for you. But the truth is, no one can actually tell you the exact optimal conditions for your tyre. And the reason is no one actually knows, apart from you, where you're riding and when you're riding on a specific course that you want to optimise your tyre pressure for. Now, you can help yourself here because you can experiment. And if you can face doing it, you can change your tyre by pre-riding a course, basically do a test ride at several different tyre pressures, for example, four or five test rides. And if you have a power meter, you can see what power do you have to output to maintain the same speed. Now, it's very tricky to do that in real life. Without a power meter, this is almost impossible. So I'm going to give you a heads up here. This secret formula is essentially a heads up, a starting place, somewhere to start. Now, I will say, if you want to be really accurate, as accurate as I can be here. Okay, for me to help you, I need to know your uh, exact weight here. So I need to know your bike weight, including the wheels and the tyres that you're going to use. I need to know um, your body weight in that. And as you know, the rider's body weight takes up most of the mass. Now, the vertical load doesn't necessarily split exactly 50-50 front and rear. So to give you a heads up on this, most, most analysis shows that if you're riding time, time trials technique with your weight you know, fully over those front bars, you're pretty much getting to a 50-50 split front and rear. If you're riding mountain bike, cycle cross, or something hybrid, for example, where you're sitting quite vertical, then you're probably going to get around um, 35 to 40% weight on that front tire. And if you're riding a typical road, then probably you're going to get about 45% on your front and about 55% on your rear. But the exact split does depend on your position. So if you want to be as accurate, you're going to have to put a kitchen scale under the front wheel, take the reading, then put it under the rear wheel, take the reading, or take two kitchen scales, take front and rear at the same time, and see what they show. Now in the spreadsheet here, you can change the ratio front to rear, but I'm going to give you typical splits for road as 45-55. One tiny note on accuracy, as well as weighing yourself and the bike, and as well as working out your front rear split, if you want to be entirely accurate, is one other thing you can do, which is rather than just take the manufacturer's tyre size off the sidewall, measure your tyre, either with a ruler or even better with calipers. In fact, pump your tyre up to roughly where you think it should be, and then measure your tyre width. That will give you the most exact, accurate 
method to measure your tire width. And yes, you can put in percentages or fractions. So if your tire width is 23.5 millimeters, you can put that in. You don't need to put in 23 or 20, 23.0. The calculator should be able to handle any decimal fraction in there too. That's the beauty of it being based on a formula rather than a spreadsheet. So before I give you the link to this formula, I'm sure you can ask me how did I come up with this formula and how do we know it's correct? Well, you probably know that in about 1989 in Bicycling Magazine, Frank Berto came out with measurements of how much force does it take to compress a typical bike tire varying by rider weight, and also looked at 23, 25 and 28 millimeter tires. That was a good starting place. After that, a similar formula was created by Dave Adams and uh, reposted by Phil Williamson, and that became a, an alternative statistical method to work out the optimal tire pressures. Further, Schwabe have produced a table of optimal tire pressures, as have Michelin, which has been adopted by Flow Cycling. So basically these four tables are out there in the public domain. All I've done here is to backwards engineer the formula that goes along with those tables. And by the way, that's not as easy as it sounds because some of them are not linear. But nevertheless, backwards engineer those formula and then the fast fitness tips recommended pressure is actually the average of those with the additional correction for front rear balance and the additional correction for um, outside conditions. Now I'm going to present you the formula here. It's basically, here's, here's the link for the formula and it's in Excel. The, re the reason it is in Excel is because, come on, this is the 21st century, guys. I, there's no point in me just reiterating the formula to you here. You have to work it out for every possible combination. I'm doing the hard work for you. Secondly, I'm not producing it in a simple table or a chart, which has been done numerous times before. What I'm doing is I'm presenting you as a mathematical formula and doing the work behind the scenes. The beauty of this formula is you can put in any rider weight from you know, your exact weight to the weight you want to be in you know, a year's time. You can, you can work this out for a friend. You can work this out for somebody who's an ultra heavy mountain bike rider or an ultra light road rider. You can also work it out for any tire width. And by the way, that is literally any tire width from, let's say, you know, 19 millimeters or below, maybe a tire that's not been invented yet or that you're working on in the lab, to a tire that's really a crazy mountain bike tire, you know, like 99 millimeter uh, mountain bike tire. You can put it into the spreadsheet and it will tell you the optimum pressure that you should really be running based on the typical tire consistencies and casing that we've got today. Let me give you a couple of cautions. Firstly, next to my typical road mixed condition, calculation, you'll find the calculations for different surface conditions. These are just approximate calculations. And when it comes to mountain bike tires, they seem to have a different case consistency to road tires. That's why the formula is so dramatically different for a mountain bike tire. You'll also notice on the spreadsheet that I've run to road, mountain and cycle cross. And that makes sense because basically those conditions are pretty, pretty disparate in terms of riding style. But it is possible you might want to ride your road bike with road tires um, in very unfavorable conditions. And you can get that from the spreadsheet too. Regarding cycle cross, obviously that covers a huge variety of surfaces. And I know generally cycle cross riders want to ride their tire pressures as low as possible without having pinch flats, but without having tire air leak, so-called burping out of the tire and without losing the tire off the rim. Obviously, you know, you've got to be careful not to run too low. Lower than is safe is just getting crazy. So use your common sense with this calculator. This calculator gives you a heads up. It doesn't tell you exactly what's right for you. It tells you what's likely to be optimum pressure for your situation, but use your common sense. And while we're talking about common sense, don't exceed the manufacturer's recommended minimum or maximum for obvious reasons. You know, generally that's not safe to do so. One last thing, if you don't have Excel, I may post the Google Sheets version, but they tend to be corrupted by people typing in crazy things with time. And uh, therefore, if you put in your total weight as a bike and rider combined and your tire width, I'll calculate it for you as long as I can be bothered. Okay, guys, that's it. Tire pressure, secret formula, fast fitness tips method. Hope that helps. If nothing else, it will get you started. And by the way, if your optimal tire pressure is different from this, significantly different from the calculator, but you've put in your data, but it, but it doesn't match up to what you're finding in the real world, I'd like to hear from you because I can make adjustments to the calculation on the fly. But this is my recommendation as of 2017. All right, guys, take it away. Have a good ride.